Woodruff, uh, the eclectic writer with neurodivergentlife.substack.com. You can find my work at uh, neurodivergentlife.substack.com and on Spotify under the eclectic writer. Uh, same with uh, YouTube Music. Uh, so today I was thinking about different things, uh, as I always am, being bounced around in a hundred different directions. And that's kind of my topic for today, is being pulled in too many directions, uh, usually by myself. <laughs> and I think, and tell me if I'm wrong, but one of the things that can keep a person from making good traction is trying to do too many things at once. And I, I don't mean simultaneously, just having too many projects going on at any given time. Uh, without traction, knowing when to quit uh, becomes more complicated and completely distorts the analysis of progress. And for me, it's uh, there's too many projects. Uh, welcome to the world of ADHD, where there's never just one spinning plate. There are dozens. And that's the way our minds work. We're, we'll start a project, we'll work on it for a while, then something else will take our interest. We'll work on that for a while, go back back to the first project, and then another project comes to mind. Before we know it, we've got three, four, seven projects going all at once. And naturally, we can't put our focus on all of them equally. And so some get more time than others. And which one gets the time kind of depends on our interest at that time. So if we have more interest in this project, uh, during several hours, then that's going to get our, our time. And this project, even though it's due first or needs to be done first, it's not as interesting in our brains, in our minds, as this one is. So until crunch time, this one gets set aside. And then crunch time comes and then this gets all the focus uh, 100%. And... Uh, you know, it becomes difficult, and there's no real set formula for figuring figuring out which thing is going to get uh, more attention than another. At you know, we we, we just don't know uh, what's going to get priority. Who knows? Uh, so here's an example from my own projects. Uh, I started remodeling a motorhome, then started remodeling an RV trailer, uh, at least just the back bedroom. Then I was trying to get a moped started. While doing that, I ended up painting it. I finished remodeling the interior of the motorhome, but not as extensively as I had planned. And I've still got to do work on the outside, except I have to have the money to be able to do it. And at 50 bucks a gallon of paint, that's, uh, I guess I vote for that. Uh, the RV trailer got most of the work done, uh, but there's a patch on the wall that just looks bad that I need to fix. And I don't know if I want to paint, if I want to put up wallpaper, I haven't decided yet. Either way, I need money for that. So that's kind of put on the back burner. Uh, and none of it is being done as, as extensively as planned. It's not working out the same as what I had in my head. Uh, and there's always more things that I can do to make it better. Uh, I got the moped working, and it's running, and it's painted, and it looks nice, and it runs uh, very good. Uh, in, in the meantime, and while doing all of that, I'm also working on three books, uh, three different blogs, and studying for certifications, uh, so I learn more about ADHD and autism and families and things, uh, more neurodivergent stuff, so that I can be more useful for you uh, with the things that I've learned. Uh, so what, what do you think? Does it sound like my hands are full? <laughs> yeah, that's a rhetorical question. Uh, but there's not enough sleep. I, I, I just don't get enough sleep. Uh, it's simple math, if you think about it. it. It's simple math. That's what they say, really. It's simple math. Uh, if the average person gets eight hours of sleep, I think that's what they're still recommending. Uh, that every, you know, you get eight hours of sleep per day. Uh, so we'll just go with that number. It might be seven, might be six. 
is naturally it's going to vary from person to person. But we'll, we'll just do eight hours of sleep. Uh, because, you know, you go to bed and not everyone falls asleep right away. Not everyone stays asleep. So we'll get eight hours, okay? So subtract that from the 24 hours in a day. That leaves you with 16. And that's for everything else. Okay. So of those 16 hours, let's go ahead and subtract three hours for meals. That's for eating, preparing, uh, or preparing and then eating uh, and clean up, Okay. Uh, yeah, you might eat while you work. Uh, I prefer not to do that myself, but I do end up doing that sometimes, uh, especially if I'm like studying or whatever, and then I can do both. Uh, but anywho, let's just say you're not working. We'll subtract three hours from meals. Okay. So now you're down to 13 hours, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I got to fix this here. Okay, so you're down to 13 hours. Now let's, we have to remember our uh, other things like uh, showers and baths. So we'll drop another half an hour uh, to get everything done with that. So uh, whether you take quick showers or whether you take baths or you take long baths, 20 minute baths, I like to suck for a while. It's the only, only time I can actually stop doing things and of course i'm still listening to audiobooks while i'm you know trying to relax in, in the bath and you know naturally get to clean up all that stuff so figure half an hour and that's for you know your three s's if you need that uh your shaving and bathroom and bathroom stuff all that so now we're down to what 12 and a half hours okay great 12 and a half hours plenty of time to get things done right i mean the average work day is eight hours you know if you're doing a regular job uh, so, what gets on that list? Okay, so, with what? Check emails, work on books, work on blogs, work on the RV, cut the grass, clean the kitchen, do laundry, do endless scrolling because you have ADHD and that's just going to happen. Uh, someone needs help with something, they call you up or they send you a text and say, hey, I need some help. And you do that and you're running back and forth and you got to take care of pets if, they, if you have those and then you've got meetings for the day you know whether that's every day once a week twice a week or whatever you get all of those and before you get know it those 12 and a half hours have disappeared and it pretty much feels like absolutely nothing has been done kind of sucks really so where'd the time go what happened to it well not everything gets worked on that's for sure uh, then there's a, a few minutes here and there for bathroom breaks, text conversations, making coffee, etc. Uh, you know, how long does it actually take to do something versus how long we think it will take? That makes a difference, too. And remember, ADHD, you do suffer from time blindness. That does not mean you don't know what time it is. So those people who have ADHD or claim that they have ADHD and are using time blindness to explain why they're always late for work cut it out it makes a bad impression and it makes it harder for the rest of us to reveal that we have adhd and or that we have other neurodivergent traits that need some consideration uh if you have that bad with time do what the rest of us do if you are actually ADHD and set your alarms. I mean, it's not uncommon for someone with ADHD to have six alarms so they can get to work on time. Okay. All right. Enough on that rant. That's not even in the script. Okay. So where'd everything go? Uh, you know, we, we take all that. So in my case, I also have an energy problem because I'm not just ADHD. I've got a lot of other things going on too. Uh, so don't compare oh, well, you know, this ADHD guy said this. Well, I'm ADHD and. So there's a lot of other stuff I won't get into. I've mentioned it before uh, in, in my articles. Uh, so I'll eat and then I'm out. I, I fall asleep. I mean, it's not immediate. It's not like a narcolepsy thing. It's not like I don't know what's coming and I can't plan for it. I feel the grogginess. I feel the energy just depleting from me the energy that i had earlier is now being used for digestion and it doesn't matter what i eat or how much i eat it's just going to happen so i don't know why it's just it's just something that happens so i'll fall asleep shortly after i'm eating 
and then you know sometimes it's for half an hour sometimes 10 minutes sometimes it's hours uh, and sometimes out of the blue i'll get sleepy for no apparent reason uh you know it's an energy thing so there i have to contend with that so uh, if i'm not doing manual work or if i am doing manual work sorry if i am doing manual work and the next day it hits me and it hits me hard it, do, it usually doesn't hit me while i'm doing it so i end up getting a whole lot done like the other day i completely well not completely but did I, a lot of work on rearranging the garage and storage, moved a wall and all that. And I thought that was on one day, and then the next day I slept, but it was actually on another day, and then I slept for like two days. But anywho, lose all track of time on that. Uh, so it kind of depends. Uh, sometimes it takes longer for it to hit. And it depends on how much energy I've exerted. And the energy isn't always just physical either. It could be emotional, mental, psychological energy. Uh, and with someone uh, with ADHD, uh, like you said, among other things, the use of energy is constant. It's a constant thing. I think I burn more calories. That could be why I have, you know, I, I never put on weight. But anywho, what usually happens is... Uh, my body tells me that I'm not getting enough sleep. Even if I'm awake, I don't have the energy to focus on what I'm doing. And I'll sit and try to get something done, only to read the same paragraph over and over again, uh, without any clue as to what I've read. Other times, I'll go on a continuous writing sprint, like I was doing with this article. Uh, my fingers fly across this keyboard while I'm watching... Uh, the fire pit. I had a fire going uh, while I was watching, while I was writing this. Uh, so do I get anything accomplished? Well, I can tell you this. It never feels like it. Never. Uh, I, I never feel like I've done enough, no matter how much or how little, that I actually do. Uh, it, it, it sucks. And it, it's my choice, but not really. It is, but it isn't. Does that make any sense? No, of course not. How can it be my choice, but not my choice? Well, you know, no one's really forcing me to do these things. Uh, you know, I did do make agreements to do so, do stuff. But I'm not being forced to do all of these things. And half the time, I'm not consciously choosing to do them either. My brain just picks up an idea. An idea my body follows along. And at some point, my mind catches up with what's going on and tries to give direction. And that doesn't always work. Uh, did I really get anything done after all those hours of working? Short answer, yes. Even if, it'll, even if it feels incomplete, it never feels complete. Uh, quite a bit is actually accomplished. It's just a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here. It adds up. Uh, other people can look at it and say, wow, you have done so much. I look at it and think, I've done nothing. It's a constant battle that I can't win. I can't get a good analysis of accomplishments for anything in my life. All I ever see are the holes and the unfinished works. I see the positive results from the work of others, but never see any of my own. Am I doomed? Am I destined for constant failure? I don't know. This, of course, blends in with my emotional dysregulation and rejection sensitivity disorder, which are part of ADHD, by the way. Uh, but I will save that for another time. So this is Michael Woodruff saying goodbye. And be sure to like, subscribe, share with your friends, follow, make a comment, do all those wonderful things that you're supposed to do. Uh, check me out on Spotify under The Eclectic Writer, also on YouTube and Apple Apple Podcasts. I don't have an Apple, so I don't have Apple Podcasts. But uh, just look for The Eclectic Writer. You'll find me. All right. Until next time, keep living that neurodivergent life.